We want to welcome you again to Midweek Hymns and Bible Study. We're glad that you're here. You know, this past week on the Today Show, my wife saw this feature of a dad who every day would walk his daughter down the alley to take the trash to the uh, trash can. But what he was doing to make it unique for her was every day they dressed up as a different superhero. One day he was Superman, one day Batman, and even one day they were the characters from the movie Frozen. Can you imagine a little girl telling her friends about what her dad was doing? I, I kind of wondered what type of person has all of those costumes in their closet. But as I thought about it, we all love superheroes. Now, when you grew up, it may have been Superman or Batman, but we love heroes. You know, in these days of shelter in place, we're surrounded by heroes. They're the essential workers. They're medical personnel, whether they're doctors or nurses, hospital maintenance workers, people in the administrative offices, those who keep things working, those who are first responders. And we are so very grateful for them. Well, today we're going to talk about a hero. In fact, he's described in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11 as a hero. Is someone that we could look at and emulate our faith from his. His name is Gideon. As we go through the Hall of Faith there, we see in verse 31, Gideon. And so today we're starting a new series. And for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking in Judges chapter 6 and beyond at this character that is described as a paragon of faith, and yet when we first see him, he's cowering in a hole. And so in just a few moments, we're going to go to Judges chapter 6, but before that, Stephen's going to come, and he's going to lead us in some hymns that we love. And I've been telling you each week, sing like nobody can hear you, because the reality is no one can, and engage your heart with the heart of God. So as Stephen comes, let me say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that we can gather, and we pray now as we sing that we might worship, that we might engage your heart with your heart. And we pray as we open up scriptures that we would hear a word from you according to the need of this day. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's another Thursday, an opportunity for us to lift our voices to the hymns of our faith. On Christ the Solid Rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered, and his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and say. On Christ the solid rock I stand, on other ground is sinking sand, on other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. On other ground is seeking sand. On other ground is seeking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports us. And that's why we can have faith in him alone. Have faith in God. Lift your voice, a great hymn. Have faith in God when your pathway is lonely. He sees and goes all the way you have trod. Never alone are the least of his children. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. He's on his throne. Have faith in God. He watches o'er his own. Cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. Have faith in God in your pain and your sorrow. His heart is touched with your grief and despair. Can 
cast all your cares and your burdens upon him and leave him there, oh leave them there. Have faith in God, he is on his throne. Have faith in God, he watches o'er his own. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in He rules, he reigns upon his throne. Have faith in God, he is on his throne. Have faith in God, he wants his eyes on. He cannot fail, he must prevail. Have faith in God, have faith in God. And that is my prayer for me and for us as his children in these days and as a church. Here's a beautiful arrangement of Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. This has been a blessing to you. God bless you as you continue to serve. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Judges. In the book of Judges, we find a, a character that we're going to be studying over the next several weeks who is a very unlikely uh, person to enter into the hall of faith that we began talking about earlier, Hebrews chapter 11. His name is Gideon. Now, when we get to the book of Judges, I'll always for, never forget that years ago I went through a walk through the Bible seminar and they taught us the, the key expressions for each book. And they gave us a key word that would describe every book in the Bible. And the one that I remember the most is the book of Judges. It was the word cycles. And we find in the book of Judges cycles, cycles of blessing and prosperity that lead to cycles of sin and falling away from God, the very source of the blessing, to the punishment, and then the repentance of the people and God sending a judge that would bring the children of Israel back out of their sin and how God would then return the blessings upon the land. Well, as we come out of chapter 5, the last verse in chapter 5 says that the land had peace for 40 years. For 40 years, there was peace and there was blessing. And yet in their blessing, the, the children of God, the Israelites, forgot the source of their blessing. We read in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, 
it leads to death. And so you see right here in the book of Proverbs what is being lived out in Judges, that the peop people within their blessing would follow their own way, and it would lead them into sin and to death. And Judges 6, 1 says that in the end, the children of Israel once again did evil in the sight of God. Well, the oppressors that are spoken of here are the Midianites, a nation to the east. Now, the Midianites had camels, and the camels made warfare so much easier for them. They would just take their camels, and they would rush in, and in that time, they could take anything they wanted. So they would wait to the season of harvest. And if Israel was harvesting all of the uh, hard work, of the produce that would carry them until the next harvest, Midian would come in and they would take it. This says they would take the cattle and the livestock and they would leave Israel with nothing. They were reduced to hiding in the caves and the clefts of the hills to stay away from the marauding Midianites. And this is where we find Gideon. Now, Gideon is from the tribe of Manasseh. He is uh, from a little town that actually the word means dusty, Ophrah. He's the last son in the family of Joash. He is, he is not the likely character that you would think that God was going to use to raise up to be a judge. And yet God comes to him and he has a call upon his life. Look with me in verse 7. When the Israelites cried to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove from them from before you, and I gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the God of the Amorites in whose land you now live, but you have not listened to me. Verse 10, verse 11. The angel of the Lord came, and he sat under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abrazite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. You know, there are some um, translations that say, You mighty man of valor. Well, let's talk a little bit about Gideon. We first find Gideon in a hole. Now, he's threshing wheat. Now, the way we would have been threshed in that day normally is, you would take it up to a hilltop and they would toss it up in the air. And when the winds would come through, they would blow the chaff away and the kernels would fall back down to the ground. And that was how they would harvest it. And yet Gideon is not harvesting it in that manner. He's, he's in a hole. He's hiding from the Midianites because the Midianites are back in the land and he's afraid they're gonna see him and come in and take all the work of the previous season and take it away with him and he would have nothing to support his family and his broader family with during these days. And so there he is hiding in a hole, a wine press, and it says the Lord met him. The Lord met him. It was King James Version that says, you mighty man of valor. And he speaks to him. And God speaks to him as he sees him, not as he is. That's important for us today. We're going to come back to that in a few moments. But he said, the Lord is with you. And what we need to understand in these days of shelter in place is that God is with us. God is with us. Now, we can remember what has passed, but God is with us also this day. You know, in verse 13, Gideon talks and he says, where is God? Where is God? We've heard about him. In verse 13, he says, but sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all of his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. He's put us into the hand of Midian. You know, you, you find this man who again is listed in the hall of faith, and yet he has questions. Now, one thing that we see, even though Gideon and his family have fallen away from God, he still knows the stories of God. He says, we've been told. He knew the story about how God had called the children of Israel out of Egypt, how the Red Sea had parted. God had led them through the wilderness. 
He knew about how God had, had backed up the Jordan River and how the walls at Jericho had fallen down. And God had brought deliverance, that God had brought deliverance all across their history. And yet what he's saying right here is, but where is he now? God has left us. You know, I said it a moment ago, these are days of faith. These are days of faith. And as you pray for those that you love and for your family, these are day to pray for their faith. These are days to truly seek the Lord. These are opportunities to build faith into those people that you know and love. And I would encourage you, take this opportunity to, to seek to build faith. Write letters, write emails, call one another. Live a life that demonstrates your confidence in the Lord himself. That's what Gideon needed to see. He said, God has abandoned us. You know, so oftentimes we're like Peter. I said this a few weeks ago. We can jump out of the boat and we can see Jesus. But when the circumstances of life slap us upside the head, we take our eyes off of Jesus and we begin to sink. We begin to sink. Do you remember that story of Peter? What happened? Jesus reaches out to him and pulls him up and he pulls him into the boat. And my friends, God is calling us to live lives of faith in these days, to keep our eyes fixed upon him. You know, at the beginning of this year, our pastor called us to fix our eyes upon Jesus. That comes from Hebrews chapter 12. And in Hebrews chapter 12, we have the follow-up, the therefore to Hebrews 11. So in Hebrews 11, we've walked through mighty men and women and the faith that they demonstrated. And then in verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Because of this, therefore, since we're surrounded such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You know, these are days to fix our eyes upon Jesus. These are days to grow faith. And what he's saying right here is, when we can look back and we can see the faith that has been demonstrated to those who've gone before us, is we can look back and see the faith that has marked our lives prior to this, that we can trust that God in this day is going to be with us. God is for us. God is for us. The writer of Hebrews says, let us lay aside that sin that so easily entangles us. Now, I don't know what that might be for you. In recent weeks, we've talked about worry and anxiety, and that certainly can, can entangle us. It can take our eyes off of Jesus. It can focus our eyes back on ourselves. Again, for the people in the book of Judges, what were they doing? They were looking to themselves. They were looking to their own resources, their own pleasures. They took their eyes off of God. And in this day, we're called to fix our eyes upon Jesus. Little did Pastor Jeff know back in January when he called us to do this, that it might be one of the most meaningful challenges heard in a generation at Park Cities. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. And so for Gideon, what we see in verse 14 is there's a call, and that call is to go. There's work for Gideon to do. You know, there's work for us to do today. May not be the same work it was three months ago, but there's work for us today. And Gideon was called to go. And implicit within this is that God's going to empower him, that God is going to preserve him, and that God is going to be his might. Go. Go. And he also says this, go in the strength that you have. And again, God is going to supply what he needs. And God is with us in this day. And so for these next weeks, I hope that you'll join us as we walk with Gideon through his journey. And from a man who is in a hiding in a hole to a man who is called out as a man of great faith. And we'll see what God has for us in these days.
I'm going to pray now, and when I finish, Stephen's going to come up, and he's going to lead us in one more hymn. Would you join me as I pray? And so, Father, I thank you for the opportunity to join with my friends another week. And I pray, God, that you would speak to us to the need that we bring to this session. Help us to find ourselves in this story. And what we need to do as we walk our faith, our journey in these days, what it means to go and to trust that you're going to be with us. So, Lord, we thank you. And I thank you again for the opportunity to worship together. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As we close today, let's lift our voices with a great hymn of hope and assurance, leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. Join with me. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. our prayer for you today that you'll find that hope and security and safety in the arms of Christ. God bless you all.